And I went out and I got two water samples. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to make it a little bit easier to see, uh, I'm going to go ahead and color one water sample, one color, and one the other. But uh, before we begin, I should just tell you, we're looking at density differences. So I have these two water samples at slightly different densities. So how can we, cha how can we change density? What are two things that we can do? Evaporate. What's that again? Evaporate. Okay. So, uh, well, just really general, really general. One way is to affect its temperature, and another is to salinity. affect its salinity. Okay, right. So I want you to put your finger in there and tell me how it feels. Cold. And okay. I can feel the salt. You can feel it? <laughs> yeah. Really? She's good. Okay. <laughs> That's really good. It's warm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have water that is slightly different density. Now, when you're at home and you want to have a nice warm bath, you turn the hot and the cold on, right? And it makes warm water. So it mixes up. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a divider in here. And my two big strong volunteers are going to each grab one of these buckets and very gently, slowly, and slowly, and, but steadily, pour the water into either side uh, you don't want one person to be too much faster than the other. You kind of want the water to go up at the you know, same, same height on either side. But just so that we can see it easier, why don't we make the cold water blue. Okay, so this is really scientific here. Okay, yeah, that looks like about enough. And uh, the, the warm water, we're going to make it red. Okay, let's see if I can do this without getting it all over myself. Yeah, that's good. And I think I'm even going to put a little bit more blue in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my handy dandy stirring material, which over here means I'm going to use this. Okay, so we've got our blue water over here. And then over on this side, I've got my red water. That's pretty good. Okay. Now, can I have my volunteers grab one side? So stand on either side of me here. I'm going to hold the divider up about midway. So it's kind of heavy, so you want to use two hands. And we don't want to slop it all over the place, so, you know, try and be a little careful. That's about halfway. Okay, so go ahead and watch each other and pour it in kind of uh, equally. So you go ahead. There you go. And we're going to make some predictions now. Now, what's going to happen when I remove this divider? I mean, are we going to get warm water like we do uh, in our bathtub? We might, right? I mean, it really comes down to how much energy is in the system to mix it. Oh, wow, this is working out really well. OK, a little bit faster, both of you guys. OK, less red. And go ahead, uh, blue. There, that's good. OK, perfect. That's good. OK, so we've got our, our water on either side. And uh, uh, you want to stick your hand on either side, you can actually feel the difference, right? Okay, so you've got nice warm water on that side, nice cold water on that side. Okay, are we ready? Okay, what's going to go, what's going to happen here? Do you have an idea? What do you think is going to happen? I think Just the, the red is going to go um, on top because the, the colder water goes more at the bottom, so it's probably going to be like the blue, a little away. more blue at the bottom and then more red okay. on the top. Well, let's see what happens. Now, keep in mind, this is just water. I'm not using oil or any fancy equipment. This is something you can do at home, too. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how long it takes. Okay, get your eyes down kind of at the same level as the water level there. And you actually see that, that, that it's not mixing at all. These are two water masses. It's not, you're not talking about vinegar and oil here. We're talking about water and water. We've just changed one of them in its density and changed the other one in the opposite direction. 
So yeah, that red water is that warmer, fresher water. And on the bottom, we on that blue is, is our salty, cold water. And what, what do we call that, that area in between of really intense temperature change? I mean, in a very, yeah, so that's a thermocline. So you can actually generate a thermocline in an ocean that's five inches tall. Okay, this is exactly what happens out in the ocean. And uh, notice that you have waves traveling in between the water masses. Those waves are much longer than the waves that might be traveling at the surface. And they travel much slower. So where your waves might be, I don't know, uh, uh, four or five per minute on the surface, these can be about one every five to seven minutes. So five to seven minutes and one wave has passed by. Because you can see it travels on much, much slower because the density difference between air and water is so great. The density difference between these two is much less, and so uh, it's able to actually hold those waves up uh, much for a much longer period of time. So the waves are much bigger, they are much longer, and they travel much slower than the surface waves. Pretty neat, right? Okay, so we have two uh, uh, density differences here. Now, what I want to do is something pretty cool. Now, uh, why didn't this become warm water? Why didn't it just turn into warm water? Blue because the different. blue is more denser, so it just went to the bottom. Okay, yeah, yes. But what is it that my sink has that the ocean doesn't oh, have? Mix it in. Yeah, it doesn't have enough energy to mix. By, by simply removing the divider, the only energy that it had in here to mix was friction between the two water masses. That's all it had. That's amazing. It hasn't combined. Yeah, and it won't for the entire duration of our, of our lecture. It'll, space, it'll stay separated probably for, an, for about an hour in a five inch tall ocean. So um, I want to do something new now. So here you have an offshore environment that has a nice stratified ocean with a thermocline, warm water on the top, cold water on the bottom. But now I'm going to pretend that I'm a storm. I'm going to come in here and let's push this down. And I'm going to be the storm that, that comes in and creates vertical movement. Now, what, what does red and blue make? What color? Purple. purple. Okay, so red and blue makes purple. And actually, what I'm going to do is add a little bit more. Can you open that red for me? And just, just uh, uh, we're going to put a little bit more dye in there just so that it's darker than the other ones. Thanks. That's good. And then just cover that. Thanks. I appreciate that. So it's going to be really dark color here. Nice and purple. Now, think about the density, the, temp well, the temperature, the salinity, and then hence the density of the water I just made. It's nice and mixed. Where would it be in, in relationship to these? In the middle. Yeah, it'd be right in the middle. So you have an offshore environment <clears throat> that's stratified, but you have water entering it that is of an intermediate density let's say, a muddy river after a major rainstorm. It may not have saltiness in it, but it's got a lot of other particulates um, dissolved in it. And maybe its temperature is such that it, it is an intermediate density. So where do you think this purple water is going? Middle. Yeah, it might go, well, I think that's a really good prediction. Shall we try it? OK, let's see where it goes. Get your eye kind of down at that level there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, is that not the coolest thing you ever saw? <laughs> it is. It's amazing what you can do with water. Water is an amazing material. It really is. And that has salt in it? Or just it now has an intermediate amount of salt. Yeah. Now, I should say, I, I cheated a little bit. <laughs> this isn't just an ocean. It's a super saline ocean. I'm using fresh water on one side and water that is probably, probably 300 and 350 parts per thousand. So I'm kind of uh, accentuating that difference you would see in the ocean here in this five inch tall ocean. I'm, I'm making that difference uh, really pronounced. But uh, we will see how long this, uh, this stays layered up like this with our red, purple, and blue. And you can really see those internal waves traveling down the length of, uh, of that thermocline. We have two thermoclines in there now, right? Two uh, uh, pycnoclines. De we actually have density differences uh, going on here. And um, that's just pretty amazing. So eventually it'll just go back to red and blue. 
Uh, no, eventually it'll, it'll, the whole thing will turn purple as uh. it, because there will be enough energy in this 5-inch tall ocean to mix uh, just because molecules will be bouncing back and forth. The ocean, though, being, you know, uh, miles deep, you know, two miles deep or, or however, uh, wherever you are on, in, in the world, there's too much water uh, and too little, um, uh, too little energy for it to mix from the surface to the bottom. The ocean is always stratified in some areas of the ocean, in most of the ocean, in fact. It's always stratified, just like this. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so we're going to leave this here. Actually, I have a thermometer. Let's see if we can get some thermometer readings. Sorry about that. Okay. And we'll see how accurately or, or whether our temperatures have held up. So the very surface here, um, so we, would you like to read my, my, my value here? Okay, so it's still going up, but it's basically right around where? 32. 32. Okay, you ready to read it again? Drop it down. You may have to read it through the. Uh, I'll put it up like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's still going down. Yeah, like 13. So it's 32 degrees Celsius up on top, 15 degrees on the bottom, and that temperature difference should stay for a long period of time. Now the salinity is not, you know, uh, the temperature will equilibrate with the air temperature because, you know, we're, we're dealing with a very small ocean here. But uh, the salinity will not because the air is not salty. So uh, the, the salinity alone will help maintain this, uh, uh, this separation. Eventually the temperatures will, will uh, uh, equilibrate out. But if you wanted to, very gently, you could take your finger and stick it all the way down in and feel that cold water. You're welcome to do that. Just do it over here on the side. And uh, I'll, we can play around with that for like one or two minutes, and then everybody kind of head on back to your seats, and we'll be there at lecture.